What you see behind me is a 1998 Land Rover Discovery that has been swapped with a diesel engine. So it's got a pretty cool set of running gear, suspension and everything, and it's also got a particularly cool driver. So let's check it out. Right now we are looking at sunrise on a canyon that is near the Grand Canyon. Jim, what would you call this area specific? This is Marble Canyon. Marble Canyon, yes. okay. And Jim here is the man. He's been leading us on the Overland Trail Tour. He used to do camel trophy back in the day, so he's very familiar with these old school Land Rovers. So tell me, what got you into these vehicles? And tell me a little bit about your background with camel trophy. Well, so 1992, I uh, applied for, tried out for, and, and uh, was accepted on the U.S. team for the 92, which was uh, Guyana. Um, that was literally the first time I'd ever driven Land Rover. Got it, immediately fell in love. Uh, just in first-gen uh, discoveries like this with the little diesel engines were just little tractors, and they just went everywhere. So kind of that started my love of them. Um, I've been working as an instructor for Land Rover for, well, since 1994, and uh, have had several. This one I picked up in 2013 and then just started working on it. Yeah, and this is a particularly nice looking one. I mean, the body is really straight on it. And you said that actually a lot of the suspension work, the bumpers, things like that had already been done when you got the vehicle, right? Yeah, the story behind this car, it was a raffle car for the Sully Hole Society. They do the uh, Land Rover National Rally. And uh, a gentleman in Phoenix won, won this car in that raffle, had it for a few years, and then just decided he had too many cars. So he uh, put it up for sale. I snapped it up because it, Again, it ticked a lot of the boxes of what I wanted. Absolutely, so let's pop the hood and check out what you've got under here because it's a pretty cool swap. So in America, you were saying that none of these discoveries were sold as diesels, right? That's correct. Um, you could get this motor, which is a 300 TDI. It's a two and a half liter turbo diesel. You could get it in this car any place else in the world, just not in America. And then what was it that, that drew you to this particular motor? Has it been more reliable than, than the 4-liter that came in this originally, or...? No, quite, quite literally not. Um, literally, it, so the Camel car had a very similar running, running gear, um, the 5-speed, the low tier uh, turbo diesel, so I was kind of just changing it over to more closely approximate that car. That makes sense. I could see how you would fall in love with your race vehicle and want to make the vehicle that you go off-road in as similar to it as possible. Absolutely. So what, what have been some of the issues that you've had with this engine since you put it in? Oh, good lord. Um, well, it's a Land Rover, so um, <laughs> that, that, that covers all manner of sin. Um, I imported this motor from a buddy of mine who uh, owns a dairy farm. He competed actually in 89 Camel Trophy, um, and so he sent this one over to me. Um, whoever had done a timing belt on it had probably over tightened it, which is a is a weak link on this motor. So it's gone through a couple of timing belts until I uh, just recently changed the housing on that. So that should fix that up. Apart from that, the motor's been pretty solid. I mean, it's been coast to coast a few times. It's been all up into Moab and, and Colorado. Um, it's been up into British Columbia. So yeah, it's it's had a bunch of miles put on it since I've put it in. And then at least one of the times you were saying when you had a timing belt go, since it was an interference motor and it kind of nuked your top end, you did uh, a different top end and a better turbo, right? Yeah, I, I essentially, when I got home from that trip, because again, it, it always happens at the worst possible moment, yeah. um, got it all the way back from British Columbia, uh, tore the motor down. Uh, a good friend of mine had a whole bunch of parts that he had sold on his vehicle and just had the parts. So it's got a Turner high performance head. Um, high performance is almost a tongue-in-cheek thing with this motor, but uh, <laughs> it definitely helped it. Um, it has a variable geometry turbo now. It has a bigger uh, upgraded uh, intercooler. So just a few tweaks like that. So what do you think is around about the power output the way it sits now? Oh, Lord. Well, brand brand new from the factory. They were about 111 horsepower. This one's probably, I don't know, probably about 130, 135. Woohoo! That's uh, smoking. <laughs> but definitely more than that in torque. Yeah, yeah. It, it's over 200 in torque. Yeah, and you definitely, you don't need a ton of power to go off-road. What you do like to have going off-road is suspension like this. So around about how much lift are you working with? It's about three and a half inches. It's an old man EMU setup. Um, and again, that came on the car when I bought it. Yeah, and then this bumper, I really like how close it cuts to the body of the truck. This seems like it gives you a lot of clearance. And then what is your winch setup? Um, so it's a super winch. Uh, it's a 9,000. 
Um, originally when I got it, uh, the bumper and the winch really were mismatched, just, uh, so to speak. It had a uh, wire rope on it instead of the synthetic and the <laughs> aluminum fair leaf. So somebody didn't think that through terribly well. <laughs> um, did a little bit of uh, a little fabrication, got it all lined up, put a synthetic on it, and it's been working great since. And then around the rest of the vehicle, of course, you've got a snorkel. You've also got these rock sliders here, which you were saying work pretty well oh. as a step. And then looking on the inside, of course, you can see, like you mentioned, it's a five-speed. So manual is always welcome. I'm assuming that all the race vehicles you guys used in the Camel Trophy were all manual as well? They were. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and But quite literally, really not modified. Drivetrain not modified at all. I mean, they had roll bars, roof racks, because we carried a lot of gear, um, skid plates, and uh, winch, front winch bumper, and that's about it. And then, have you done any re-gearing on this? Is there any extra skid plates underneath? Um, no, actually, I, um, when I did the swap, I pulled the center skid plate off, um, just because clearance is really not an issue on this for the type of four-wheeling I do. Um, it already had four living gearing. They'd already swapped those out from the original 350 gearing. And uh, it's got ARB lockers front and rear, and that came with it when I bought it. Nice, ARB lockers front and rear is always a good thing. Yeah. And then, of course, in the back, I'd love to see you've got a bit of a camping kind of overland setup, right? Yeah, this is actually fairly new. It had a rooftop tent on it before, and uh, I just kind of decided to fab up something different. So uh, the platform in here, and it's a good sleeping platform. It's six foot long with the seat all the way forward, plus plenty of storage, and everything straps down nice. Yeah, and then, of course, you've got an ARB fridge. Uh, what is this runoff? Um, so I added a, a house battery to it, so it's a double battery setup. Um, and the house battery runs this and then a thousand watt inverter as well. So I get a little extra power, can charge things, that kind of thing. Nice. Yeah, that's probably smart on a on an old school British vehicle to not have any extra extra power draws on your starter battery. No, exactly. So what do you primarily use this vehicle for? Um, I bought it uh, originally and, and still it's, it's more of a work vehicle. And I work tongue in cheek again. Um, so we use it to, you know, obviously get to jobs, uh, wherever they might be, whether it's, you know, this kind of job where we're gu guiding or, uh, instructing. Um, I use it in my, my business in Phoenix for instructing off-road and, uh, yeah, then just whenever, like we'll get to ex Expo, it'll be just a workhorse to, to get stuff done, whether we're using the winch or whatever else on it. And has it ever failed you when you've been actually using it for work and guiding people off-road? No, knock on wood, because we have the rest of the day today. So, um, <laughs> but True. no, it's pretty much when it's decided to uh, to have an issue, it's always been on private stuff. You know, when we're just out having fun. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that remains the case, and hopefully <laughs> the timing belt doesn't go again. For sure, because it only has literally 500 miles on it right now. So I think we're okay for a bit. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the timing belt can last at least 500 miles. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jim, thank you for running us through this vehicle. Uh, roundabout. All in, how much have you put into this from, oh, from buying it to modifying it? That's dumb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, all said, between the, the original purchase, the motor work and all that, I mean, I'm probably right about 20K into it over since 2013. So Honestly, for how cool this is and old school, and hopefully now that the timing belt is done, <laughs> it'll be a, a pretty solid, reliable vehicle. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's a cool price to pay for a cool vehicle. Well, thank you for showing me around it and uh, hope to see you out on the trail more often. Will do.